you. Thank you for your invitation. I will say some words about the Signal Images Lab, the Institute of Information Science Technologies. First, where we are, we are at the, the Visa Research Area of the National Research Council in Italy, and we are a small piece of the whole campus. And what we, we do inside this, uh, this Institute of Information Science and Technology, we, we are the Signal and Images Lab. Uh, we are about 15 researchers, plus a lot of associates, which are students, fellows, and technicians who, who work every day in, uh, in the field of signal and image processing. Uh, as a background, we have a mixed background with computer science, mathematics, physics, engineering. We have somewhat a mix, and we have expertise in computer vision, multimedia processing, and semantics. And we work on since image and signals are ubiquitous in our Nowadays, we, we work in several application areas, nano ICT, smart cameras, ICTOs for the sea. But health and well being is one of the, of the most perfect applications domain we, we, we follow. And we have a number of active projects that permit us to, to develop our research activities. Um, well, our goal is to cover more or less the full multimedia life cycle from the acquisition and production of images and signals of different natures, from images collected by cameras, from all medical devices, uh, going through the processing and understanding of this data, from low level processing to upper level, uh, until understanding and notation, uh, automatic annotation of videos by using artificial intelligence methods, to finally the the storage and distribution to, 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 to users by providing informative system and also 3D virtual environments. So this is uh, our full application area in the different domains. And looking at the, uh, at our, the methodology we, we use, we, we are using mainly methodology from computer vision, from artificial intelligence and intelligence system, statistical signal processing, and also since we have a lot of mathematicians inside topological data analysis. Um, the, um, our experience in national international cooperation regarding projects connected to, to the healthcare and well-being domain is, is long. Uh, we have some active projects uh, uh, for, the, for the monitoring and uh, uh, remote uh, assessment of, of people for the, for the so-called active aging in the active age project, let's say, which is, which is currently running. Uh, we have also another project from funded by the Tuscany region, which is the Intesa project for ICT service for well-being of freight individuals, in this case for people uh, against elder, the, against the elderly or the frail ones who need some assistance at this time from motoria to physiological, the virtuoso project again, and um, the semiotical project that we uh, will we were coordinated by us in, uh, in the past years and, and a lot of many others connect mainly to chronic diseases or to, to, to keeping the uh, good lifestyle and we we'll talk about it later. So um, actually the lab is large and we have several applications in life science. Uh, I just see, just would like to, to show you some example of the, of the activities, we, some concrete application we are currently pushing. And, so I don't, I don't read the list, but we will go through. So first one is uh, the analysis of EEG. So we have some activity connect to the, to the single channel processing of the EEG signals, um, and mainly for the detection of events, so the, uh, detecting events, segmenting the, the waves, and then um, making some processing in, in, the, in, in the framework of the complexity analysis. So we would like to attach index of complexity to each uh, uh, to each uh, each channel of the EEG, and actually complexity index is well linked to to the emergency to the emergent default network more. So we can understand the brain dynamics by studying the complexity maps. Uh, in actually, uh, the more the signal is complex, more is connected to the default mode network, and so we can understand um, uh, disorders of consciousness in in, in, in people. And then from the single channel analysis, we move to the multi-channel events analysis. So uh, in this sense, we, we, we make some analysis about the correlation among the channels. So uh, what we, we are doing is basically event-based connectomics uh, on the base of EEG signals. Of course, all the methods we are applying are, uh, can be used not only for the EEG, but 
can use, use for ECC, EOG, and all, all other electrophysiological signals, but also they can be applied also to other kind of time, sequence, time series analysis. Uh, so this is for what regards the, the signal connected from the brain, uh, which are uh, a very fine um, data from the temporal scale, but we are also making something more linked to the spatial, maybe less spatial, less time resolution, but more spatial resolution with brain connectivity by this study of functional magnetic resonance imaging. And this is a study uh, connected with the use by ASM machine learning methods for tracking changes in brain connectivity networks. And we are performing this study in cooperation with uh, Stella Maris, with the Imago 7 project. So we, uh, and we, it is uh, a scientific work we are carrying out right now. And then um, so about the study, we have also analysis in uh, computational biology. And the current study regards the study of the 3D structure of chromatin. Chromatin is the, um, the fiber which gives structure to the, to the DNA. And we, on the basis of data from sequences, we are uh, currently analyzing and discovering possible 3D configuration of the chromatin. So this is done by uh, studying uh, fragments of chromatin and understanding the, if there are some pieces that are, are for me, are, very likely to be found very near each other. And on the basis of this data, we can reconstruct physical cause with uh, 3D structure of the chromatin. Uh, then another activity we are carrying out in co this time in cooperation with uh, another um, Institute of the National Research Council, Vita, which is IFAC in Florence, and with the cooperation of um, hospitals in Pisa and in Florence is connected to radiomic analysis. So radiomics basically consists in, uh, in the idea of extracting a massive data from images uh, in, in order to, to extract a large number of features that can um, be then made together inside so-called radiomic features. Uh, the radiomic features can be used as a sort of biomarker identification that can be used for making uh, some precision medicine, some precision personalized medicine and together with other omic science like genomics, uh, uh, digital pathology, and clinical analysis. So our idea is to be able to extract and validate some index that can be used as prognostic biomarkers, especially in oncology. Um, another activity we are carrying out in, is in plain biomedical image processing, digital pathology. In this case, we have a uh, studying deep learning models that can be used for the analysis of for digital pathology. And we, we apply this, uh, our model to the, some particular example, which is the classification of osteosarcoma uh, cells, uh, namely the MG63 cells, uh, differentiating them from uh, uh, stomach cells. And for this um, reason, we applied some deep learning Methods. We, we had to compete with the, with the problem of having few data, so we, we had to set up proper data augmentation techniques. But then, uh, also with the, the limited data set we, we had, we, we were able to, to get a, a very good accuracy in the detection of cells. Another activity we, we are coming out is connected with decision support for chronic patients. So this was done in uh, connection with the uh, with project in which we study uh, people mainly at home, but also using data from the clinical settings. In this case, the idea is to develop some decision support systems that can combine different kinds of reasoning, from inferential reasoning based on ontologies and based on rules. So this is some uh, sort of uh, uh, inferential reasoning based on some, some sort of axiom syllogism to uh, computational intelligence and decision methods which are based on machine learning approaches. And so together they, we put them inside decision support systems, also exploiting some uh, the information coming from the diagnostic data and also exploiting the information made for um, extracted by image processing. So we had an application to earth cradle in the earth cradle domain in which we uh, we formalized all the guidelines from the new from the American Health Association, and we, we put together also with the, we combine them and integrate with the system for the automatic analysis of echo of ultrasound cardiac imaging for um, for performing uh, analysis of uh, of the feeling pattern in health failure patients. 
Final axis regards the, the helping uh, people using assistive technology for physical and cognitive training. This is done in, uh, in the framework original project named Intesa, which was recently ended. And in this case, we perform different kinds of extra games. Well, some of them were tailored to physical activity, others were tailored to attention tests in order to, to assess the, uh, the, physio, the, the, physio, the physiological states of a uh, of patient, especially the trained ones. And in this case, we use some uh, different kind of, uh, of, of interface. We use uh, some gesture interface based on the Kinect, but at the same time, we, we, we assess the physiological state by using EEC wireless sensor. So we use low-cost uh, brain activity uh, sensors uh, that need no gel, so dry, sweet, dry application. Mm. In the framework of the semiotic project, which was carried, which was uh, which the, the lab was coordinator, uh, we, we, we developed uh, the prototype of the so-called wise mirror, which is a sensorized mirror, mirror having inside uh, a number of sensors, ranging from smart spectral camera, depth sensor, high precision cameras, that were able to perform several measurements on the face. So this is linked to the idea of digital semiotics. So the idea is that on, by analyzing the, the face of a person, we can, uh, we can read something about their health status. And actually, uh, using the sensor that were uh, behind the, this wise mirror, uh, it, it was possible to understand something about skin composition. So it was possible to understand if there was some, cut, some the presence of AGE agents in, in the skin, to assess the, the presence of hypercholesterolemia, uh, to understand the shape and morphology of the face, so to understand from the face if there was some sign of obesity or overweight, uh, to understand the endothelial function, uh, and so to, to understand which kind of microcirculation was, in, was uh, possible by using the multispectral camera, and to study by simple video analysis, so by, uh, by analyzing some, uh, some chunks of the video of the face, uh, collected with the uh, normal cameras was possible to, to understand gestures and expression, so to evaluate the uh, 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 psychological states of the, of the person in front of the mirror. Uh, also, we, it was developed um, the presence of uh, uh, in-nose sensors that was capable of analyzing the breath composition, and so to, to perform a, a complete analysis of the face, also from uh, to understand noxious habits such as drinking too much alcohol or smoking. So here we had a video, but we checked it before and it didn't work, but <laughs> hopefully we will have it in the slides afterwards. And okay, so this was the mirror uh, uh, as told as a, as a sensing device, but what we are doing with the, with the data we are sensing. So the idea was to, to use this sensor data to perform some virtual assistance. So after performing some user profiling, so in which several kinds of information was analyzed from the baseline profile, so to the physiosocial parameter, to the action profiles, but also to the modulators, that is the, uh, the motivation to, to change of each person, which is different from mine, from, from yours. And um, to put the sensor data and the user profile together in a guidance engine that could provide information uh, of two kinds. First, a wellness index, which is uh, some compact numerical indicators of the status of health of a, of a person, and then to, to suggest some, some things to do. So to perform a personalized guidance uh, regarding activity, nutrition, physical health, mental health, suggesting about which, how much to sleep, and so on. So this is was uh, the, the idea what to do with, with, the, with the data sensor with the West Mirror to, to perform some wellness index and to give some virtual assistance to, to people. Um, further, this idea of uh, studying just the face was extended in another project with, the, uh, with, the, with the, the Sardinia region, in which we extended the analysis to the full body to understand mainly the, um, the variation in body shape. So in analyzing uh, the the presence, not only the overweight, but also to, to understand the fat mass and the distribution of the, of the fat mass, to, especially for visual fat. And also in this case, we use a conventional, 
a conventional 3D scanner, the, the, the cost of 3D scanner, like with mainly consists in, in a connect, uh, and that were used in the uh, health in wealth centers and uh, gyms for the, as an additional service. So this is more or less uh, uh, the the work we have done directly connecting with, with people, um, but we we are also working in uh, in the production and uh, in helping um, and helping company which are uh, producing diagnostic devices. Actually, we have currently an ongoing project together with the Hyperform Computing Laboratory, uh, which regards uh, uh, predictive maintainer diagnostic device. In this case, the, the goal of the project, which is funded by Tuscany Region, is to develop a new uh, eBay device which can combine computer tomography and uh, spec uh, for uh, head and neck images, so in this, uh, this framework. And um, of course, the, the role of uh, our institute is uh, the one to, to augment the physical system with a, a cyber counterpart in a sort of digital twin uh, by using machine learning algorithms for simulating and uh, giving advice for predictive maintenance. Uh, so mainly um, collecting information available by the, um, by the technician, but also by analyzing the, uh, the image produced by the we can understand if uh, um, some intervention will be, will be needed. So to perform some early detection and to be able to, to perform the so-called uh, predictive maintenance. Um, actually, uh, we, we are active in the, this is a project related to healthcare, but it is in the framework of Industry 4.0 and the high performance computing, which is represented here today by Manuela, which is here, <laughs> uh, and we said this uh, Rafael Perigo is working in machine learning neural networks for big data analysis and cloud and distributed computing, and they are experts in artificial intelligence and are collaborating in, in big data, and they are collaborating with the H2020 project, so also big data, and also in other projects related to um, to, to the delivery of health care, and actually they are following also a project with, together with Agenas for the, for the evaluation of care pathways uh, together with the, with the regional um, care agency in Italy, the ASP, and uh, they're connected with many other industry 4.0 together also for different aspects from, from the uh, combined hybrid uh, spec CT to a collaboration with the Fiat Chrysler Automobiles for the predictive maintenance as well. So the methods we develop both in the clinical settings and the industry for the CEO being uh, artificial intelligence one or rather uh, can be applied to, to several domains. So I think that's all from my side.